Hi everybody, it's Jessica Nicole Dickerson, aka JND, and I'm coming back with another video. Ooh. So, this is my Acting 101 series to help out other actors, supporting actors, actors supporting. So, I hope you enjoy, and um, make sure that you guys check out the other videos I've done. I've uploaded both my demo reels that I use to get auditions, the tools to begin acting. So, make sure you check out those videos, and if you like them, make sure to give them a thumbs up. In this video, I want to talk about audition horror stories. So, as an actor, you should expect to go to auditions. I expect the same thing. You go in, you smile, you give in your headshot, you either say the lines they gave you or do an improv activity. It's real quick. It roll out and that's, that's the audition, you know? Some, some auditions are not like that. For some reason, it's just... Breaks my heart to say that there's some there's some weirdos in this world, and there's apparently a good amount in the uh, acting industry that I should be concerned about. But I say as long as you're smart and you're being aware, it's totally okay. I'm just sharing with you the experiences that I had, so maybe you can learn from them. So, the first and the, probably the most terrifying experience I've had going to auditions is one time I went to downtown LA. I had an audition in this building. One, the building was super sketchy and I didn't, I couldn't tell like where to go. It like it, on the audition call sheet, it said like third floor room something. And I'm just like, I walk into this building and there's a homeless person in the lobby. And the lobby was also like two by eight feet with an elevator and a staircase. I'm like, okay, they didn't have a lot of money for this audition space. So they bought the cheapest one. Stay calm, Jess. Don't judge them before, you know, you go in. So I go up and... After reading and walking around the hallways in a few signs, this gentleman comes out and he's like, Oh, were you here to audition? I was like, Yes, I am. Thank you for helping me. I go in and it's just this white wall backdrop and this dude with a camera. And he's just taking pictures. He asked me, Where's your headshot? I was like, Here you go. I'm trying to be positive, you know. Please hire me kind of energy. Takes a picture real quick of me smiling and not smiling. And then he goes, Thank you. And I'm just like... You made me drive. At that time, I was living way down in the OC at the time, Orange County, and it was downtown LA. I drove two hours to get my picture taken. And my agent sent me to this, my agent at the time sent me to this. So I was fuming. I was like, I just spent two hours in traffic coming up and I have to spend two more down. That's so much gas just to take my picture. Like, I expect auditions to be short, but I at least want to do and, like I want two minutes at least this dude literally took the picture and like left So I go home and I'm like really upset and mad. I'm about to call my agent I'm like, I don't understand and then I get an email saying hey, we loved you We'd like you to come back tomorrow and we're gonna be at this address blah 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 I immediately shoot with like excitement because I'm like, okay, this one second or four hours in traffic was totally worth it because now I'm gonna get a job because I just got the call back and I'm super excited. So the next day we go back up two hours again into traffic up to downtown LA and we go to this address and it's in a residential area. There's like a school, an elementary school right across the way and then someone's house. And I've heard that they run out houses sometimes or like uh, casting places will have their own building but it's like a house and people and the rooms are like refurbished for auditioning so I go up the, the problem was is that there was kids outside already and they said oh there's nobody here and there's nobody in the house and I'm just like that's a little creepy uh, we're all assuming maybe this person's late maybe well, let's just wait it out and see but this one courageous kid who's like, and I say kid, we were all like in our late teens, early teens. This dude opens the door to this house, sticks his head through and starts walking through this house going, hello, who's there, anybody there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, but like, what if this is someone's house and we're just walking through? And to my, <laughs> just as I'm thinking that, there's a dog that runs out and starts to say hi to all of us and this woman creeps out of the house going, hey, what's going on? Why are you guys in front of my lawn? This is my house. And we were all like, I immediately go, I'm so sorry. We got a casting call and the audition is supposed to be at this address. And the woman's just like, yeah, but this is my house and I don't have a casting call. And immediately I'm about to hop into the car and drive away and leave because I'm like, this is another waste of time. This is some scam. This woman clearly doesn't know what's happening and someone used her house address to collect kids or something. It just sounded creepy. And then 
and then this gentleman comes shooting from behind the house he comes walking out and he's like one he couldn't really speak english and two he's like oh follow me are you here for the auditions follow me and he walks back and the kid the people the actors who came start following him along and I'm trying to ask him, like, hey, what's going on? Uh, do you don't have any signs up? Are we auditioning at this place? Do we have the wrong location? And he explained to the best of his ability that he rented an Airbnb and that he's running late. And I was just like, I, this is a woman's house. I'm not going to trampede through her house to get to this Airbnb if it's an Airbnb. And I was just, it was sketchy. It was, it was sketchy. This gentleman pops out of nowhere in the crevice of this woman's house, like in the walkway between other buildings, goes, follow me. What do you do? You don't follow him. Even if it could have been a real commercial or something, I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't risk that. I'm like, I'm, I'm too cute. I'm not, I'm not falling for this trick. <laughs> so I was, I was pretty, I was pretty upset about that. And that leads to an interesting conversation with my agent later, but that I, I that is what I'll say for another video. I'll have a, a video about how I feel about agents and my experiences with them. But that was probably the weirdest audition experience I've ever had. Um, so I've just learned, I think it was considered a spec commercial. So that means that they're gonna film it hoping that the company picks it up. So like he, I think it was a ramen commercial, a ramen spec commercial. And it's just not legitimate and clearly I, I don't know I, I felt like it was unsafe and that we had all disturbed this woman's household so I was like heck to the no I ain't staying here next I had a Verizon spec commercial um, I got excited because it said Verizon and I'm assuming like oh Verizon the phone company they want me I wake up extra early driving to downtown LA two hour drive it was at 8 a.m. And the address led to an abandoned building in a very dirty street. Like, a street that literally had, that had hookers walking around. And I'm like, to film a Verizon commercial, you pick this location. Even to audition, like, why would you, there's no buildings, there's no signs. He wanted us to meet outside. Sadly, there was, there, one, there was a hooker outside waiting. Uh, two, there was a bunch of people who started, a bunch bunch is an over exaggeration there was like two people who I think were also a part of the same crew that I thought I was gonna be a part of waiting for these people to come so we could film this spec commercial and they waited outside and I'm just like okay what if this is real and I turned down this audition so I'm waiting in the car with my parents who were lucky I, I was lucky enough to have driven with them because I'm still very un uncomfortable when it comes to going to auditions by myself so I'm like I'm gonna stay in the car and watch this corner and see if anybody else comes and it was supposed to be at 8 a.m. I got there maybe 7.50. 30 minutes pass and nobody's nobody's come along with camera equipment or anything to do any sort of audition or recording and there's still these people are slowly trickling in of like four people who think they're gonna be in a Verizon spec commercial but no one's come along and he's emailed us going I'm running late, I'm bringing snacks, stay put, and I'm just like, this just feels wrong. It feels like we're waiting to be picked off or something or picked up by a stranger, you know? It just didn't feel safe. I waited 30 minutes. I think 30 minutes is a long enough time to wait and be like, okay, this doesn't seem real. This is in a really sketchy, ugly neighborhood. Who would even want to film there, outside or inside? Because all the buildings were like demolished and it just it felt so unsafe and i'm just i feel bad for these people that are waiting at around 8 20 something we we drove away i'm just like pissed off that i spent so much time hair makeup the drive the traffic and i bothered my parents to come help me because i was scared for the audition luckily i did because it was a sketchy audition and now i know not to apply to spec commercials anymore and that's just my experience maybe people have other experiences with spec commercials where they have you know, this grand team of people who film a super cool commercial. I did not have that experience. Neither spec commercial seems to be legitimate. And they also seem to be the most sketchiest thing ever. I get not having money, but don't you think you should save up to 
get a safe space and camera equipment and be on time and not be outside and pick a nicer street to film on like there's so many things they didn't do right and the last experience i will share was not so it it was supposed to be an audition in my eyes i thought it was going to be an audition i got a call for an audition like 24 hours in advance saying hey come meet us at this address we loved your headshot and resume we'd love to audition you and my mistake was not asking immediately what the audition was for i was too excited that to the fact that I got an audition. So make sure you figure out what the audition's for before you drive all the way down. Luckily, this one was in the OC as well, in Orange County, so it wasn't a far drive. It was maybe like 30 minutes, which is usual for California. But when I got there, they hand us the little blurbs we're supposed to say. They're little commercial blurbs. They're like five sentences long about, you know, soup is good or Starbucks coffee's the best. Or There's a couple lines that are cute and funny and you just throw energy in it. So I'm memorizing, it seems like a legitimate audition. I go into the audition room, I do the lines. I kind of mess up because I'm nervous because it was my, it was one of the first auditions I went on. And they immediately start tearing apart my headshot and my resume going, why is this your headshot? I can barely see your face, I don't like it, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like standing there going, oh, uh, that's my headshot. Why did you call me to the audition if you didn't like my headshot? And they're like, well, you can do so much better. You are such a beautiful woman. You look like, and they literally kept telling me, you look like in Zendaya. You are a Zendaya type. You should be landing all these jobs and you look like Zendaya. And you could be like her. You could do this. You could be a millionaire. You just need better headshots. And your resume, what is this and this and that? And blah, blah. And she was just tearing me apart. And I'm just like sitting there. And in my naive mind as a beginner, as a beginner, I didn't feel like I should defend myself. I was listening to her and going, yes, I agree. And I'm thinking I'm learning from her. I'm going like, okay, I need a better headshot. Okay, I need more practice. Okay, I fumbled up on my words. Um, I just because I need to practice my craft. I don't think I'm the best, but I still think I deserve a chance. And at that point, she already had me on the like the offensive side where I'm just like listening to them and I'm like okay I can do this I can I should listen to you and I should believe in you because you seem like the knowledgeable type and she was very aggressive with her comments and kind of nasty with her comments and then she immediately wanted me she's like okay we'd love you for this acting program and I was just like what so she had this two thousand dollar acting program for eight weeks we met once a week and we'd be working on a different skill set every week stuff but some weeks would be just headshots so we'd take a headshot and she'd say it's from the best headshot taker in the whole universe and the girls from Pretty Little Liars had their headshot taken by him and things like that so immediately after she had thrown everything that I had in my face I'm going okay this sounds like a good program um let me I'm, I wanted to say let me think about this program because it's a lot of money and I don't have it and she goes well you have two hours to sign up and send me a check for the first payment and she's like rushing for money and I'm like I don't have any money so I called my parents I'm so so grateful I did I called my parents and said oh I think I want to do this program at this point I really wanted to do this program because she basically tugged at my heartstrings and said, you want to be famous, you want to be an actor, you want to do this, this, and that, you want to be in the industry, go to my program. And at the point of defeating or destroying everything that I had worked on, on my headshot resume, on my performance, I felt like I needed it. She made me feel like I needed this. So I called my parents and they immediately come up and they're already like defensive. They're like, what do you mean she's asking for $2,000 right now? What does this program look like? And they're asking all these questions that makes sense to me and they open my eyes we sit down with this woman it's like why do you want the money so fast why is your acting program so short and only a few of the classes actually have acting practice involved how many people are in the class if it's a two-hour class if there's 30 people that's not a lot of time for each student to develop and you know get good practice acting so i'm so happy they came in and basically saved me from a huge scam so I believe this happened because I was looking for Disney auditions online. Uh, I have yet to find any resource on that, honestly. Um, but don't put in your emails. Don't put in your emails or phone numbers to any websites that there. There's a lot of scams out there, and she called me, I think, from one of those. So I, I now only strictly use casting websites, Actors Access, Casting Frontier, LA Casting. And no spec commercials anymore, for me at least. I, I've decided not to. And just 
and knowing what the audition is for if it's for an acting program to audition for it they shouldn't be asking for money outright like that and they should be more upfront with why they're asking for that like there's this is an acting program do you want to audition for it they shouldn't make you audition and then destroy you emotionally and then offer this acting course that's going to help you because it's messing with kids and all of the people in the room were all so young they were like 7, 10, 12 these are kids who dream of being on TV just like I dream of being on TV and their parents are sitting there going like sure $2,000 to get my kid on TV I'll do that but the likelihood of that happening is not high like it was just, it's, it's a scam that people use, and they use your emotions to get you to do those things. They say that you'll get famous by doing this program by paying $2,000 or $3,000. But the likelihood of their showcase, because, you know, they'll have classes. We're going to get you a headshot on this class. We're going to work on commercials on this class. We're going to work on theater on this class. And in the last class, we're going to do a showcase in front of all these agents that might pick you up. For $2,000, like, I could go to an actual acting program that maybe meets three times a week for two hours that has only 10 people in there and I'm actually practicing acting. So when it does come time to see an agent or go to a casting director, I am skilled enough and confident enough to do it well and show them what I have and they like that instead of going through this rushed program and hoping to learn something out of one, the one or two classes where they offer acting that is shared with so many other people and showcase to agents who who even knows if that was real if there was it probably it might have been it might have been true benefit of the doubt but i much rather would invest in a real acting course that teaches the skill and the craft so just be wary of that there's a lot of people who are going to ask you for money in this industry and just know that you don't have to do it being careful with that being careful with your audition so from my experiences <laughs> Make sure you know what audition you're going to and what it's for, if you can. Sometimes I know some agents are like, I can't tell you, it's top secret, and it's like a big TV show or whatever. That's okay. But if they literally ignore the question and then ask you to sign up for something, and I wish if I knew what I knew now and I was in that moment, if they would have told me, hey, you suck, blah, 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 sign up for my program, I would have said, hey is this audition for a production or a tv show commercial what's this for and they go well it's for the class i'd be like thank you but no thank you you know i make sure to know what i'm auditioning for to the best of my ability the character there should be sides there should be some information about the project the casting director things i could google and make sure that they're real and make sure the location is safe i honestly don't do spec commercials anymore either just because I've had a couple bad experiences with them. I have so many other audition horror stories, but this video is probably gonna be so long already. And yeah, so just letting you know, as an actor or as a person on this planet, just know there are some schemy people out there and I want you to be careful and I want you to be smart and I want you to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> And I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,